In today's session, we're going to take a look at uh, Application Extender and various of the modules that are represented by the Application Extender platform. The client that we're looking here at here is the uh, Web Access Client. Uh, we'll see that we've got a data source, which is App Extender Demo. It's an access database. And underneath here are applications. Uh, what I normally do is call them folders, file cabinets, file rooms, where uh, homogenous data would be uh, stored and retrieved. So when we uh, take a look at county land records, let's go in and you'll notice uh, that right away we come up with a new query. The reason that we do this is we're doing everything through a search methodology. You do not uh, go into a directory, subdirectory, folder, subfolder environment. So with that said, if I just did a wildcard search and brought back everything, which of course would not be something that you would do in a production world, uh, I would get a result set of information back. If I go ahead and click this document, we'll see that we are returned the 27 pages of content. And the content, as Phil explained in the PowerPoint presentation, can be anything that can be digitized. So this page is a scanned piece of information. The second page may be a Word, it may be a PDF document, digital photos, etc. So let's just go ahead and navigate through. This happens to be a zip file. And a zip file is being represented here, uh, just like you would see it in, uh, in its uh, zip format. If I went and did a right mouse button and hit launch, it will bring up the native product itself so that you can be able to extract. Again, emphasizes the fact that the information that's contained within the document itself is, is really secondary in nature. It does not matter where it came from. This is a PDF document. Let's go ahead and just do information, and we'll see that that is PDF. Now, the reason that I want to bring that up is, the, is because not only can we be able to display a PDF document within the viewer uh, itself, but we can also take advantage of some advanced concepts such as annotation and redaction. So, in other words, if I want to be able to uh, highlight this uh, set of information down here, I can come up, grab the annotation tool, and go ahead and highlight that and be able to uh, uh, reference that information. Go ahead, draw an arrow, and even do a text box. This is all out-of-the-box functionality. This is important. So that uh, I can be able to display this to anybody that's coming into the system. Uh, if I do a, a blue and a yellow, go ahead and set that up. That information is now going to be referenced anytime somebody comes to that page. So let's just go ahead and see that again. Now we'll see that that information is being displayed. Now this text box may be uh, something that you don't want everybody uh, that has allowed ex access into this uh, document to be able to see. So I can go ahead and change the properties on it and display it as an icon. Now before I go, you'll also notice down here the created and modified. This is highlighting the fact that out of the box, we do have an audit trail capability. So we see here that because there was a few seconds in between, we put uh, the created as well as the modified environment. The group down here talks about annotation groups. I'm not going to be showing that today, but I do want to mention that you do have the ability to have essentially group privileges for annotations as well as redactions. The ability to say managers can be able to communicate with themselves or between themselves, and that communication would not be shown to anybody outside of that annotation group. So I'm just going to go ahead and do an OK there. Uh, I talked about redactions just a moment ago. A redaction is, cleverly, the ability to hide information. So I want to be able to perhaps uh, reference that uh, set of information, uh, and I'm going to change the properties and put it as the same color as the background. So therefore, that information is removed from my viewing uh, experience. The reality is, very important, that whether it's annotation or redaction, we never change the original content. Okay, that's important when we're dealing with legal, when we're dealing with auditing, uh, any type of records uh, capabilities, we don't want to be able to modify the original content. What about, uh, I'll go ahead and bring that up again, what about rubber stamping type of capabilities? So if we've got rubber stamps set up, if I want to do an approval or a block, a block out box, confidential, if I do an approved by, 
I'll go ahead and just put that down there. This is who I'm logged in as and the date that it was uh, actually applied. So being able to set up rubber stamps by the uh, application or again the file cabinet by the user themselves, uh, you have multiple capabilities there. One, one other thing I want to show you at this point is the thumbnailing type of presentation. So if I bring up thumbnails, this is using the Microsoft Silverlight technology. Not only can we bring up the uh, presentation of each page, if this is what we call a contact sheet, but we can go ahead and real time be able to expand those thumbnails and then be able to have that information being displayed in a single uh, pane of, of glass, if you will, on your browser experience. You can also go ahead and reorder this information, again, if you have security. So if I've got reordering and I want to take this page and move it right to the, right beyond the foreign file there, go ahead and do such. Okay, and I'll go ahead and minimize this again. What about navigation experience? I want to go to the next document. I'm in this particular view. In fact, I'll just move this up a little bit. I'm in this particular view. If I go to the next document, it's going to go ahead and bring that up and bring it up in that same contact sheet experience. This is something that we found to be very prevalent with sheriff's departments, police departments, uh, application type of scenarios, uh, loan processing, things where people want to get to the uh, document quickly, be able to uh, do thumbnailing, and uh, then go ahead and if I wanted to bring up that page, just click on it, and it brings up that uh, page for uh, reference in the full client then. Also, with the uh, web client as well as the desktop client, which I haven't shown at this point, you do have scan capabilities, again, out of the box. The scan function allows us to be able to bring in pages, documents, and even do batch scanning. It is not a replacement, nor is it marketed as one for Captiva, uh, QuickScan Pro, for Input Excel, or anything else of a production nature. But again, it does allow people in a front operation center, perhaps grabbing one, two, three pieces of information with a scanner that's attached to their desktop to be able to uh, apply that information immediately. So uh, not only do you have that scan capability with Twain scanners, our little scanners, but also uh, the ISIS scan capabilities. Uh, Pixel Translations, which is part of Captiva, gives us the ability to work with production level scanners with the web access client out of the box. I don't have uh, a scanner on me today, so I'm just going to do an import file and insert after this page. And I'll just go ahead and bring up a, a, a picture and just go ahead and apply that. So I can bring up one piece of information, I can bring up multiple. Now you see that this picture is pixelated. I want to go ahead and depixelate it just by downsizing it. If I want to be able to rotate, certainly go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm going to go to a different page and just go ahead and magnify this information. So if I want to go ahead and do that, have a nice built-in magnifying glass on the page itself, or we can even go off and turn off what we refer to as the pan hand or pan mode, and be able to just go ahead and highlight an area, magnify that, and even be able to print or save that what, what is referred to as a snippet of information from the uh, page that we're on. If I want to be able to modify the index information, Go ahead and do such by going by clicking on that. And again, everything is privilege based. So if I have the ability to modify the index, I go ahead and hit modification and change the date, change the type, change the number, etc. Go ahead and save that, and off I go. I'm not going to go ahead and do that right at the moment, but I will leave the indexing. Now that's some navigation capabilities within the document itself. Let's go back to our uh, query methodology. You'll notice that we have the uh, three fields that have been defined for the county application and over to the right we have a search range and a search list. So if I go over and do a search range that's going to be bring up this uh, uh, narrative for between, greater than, greater than or equal, etc. So if I want to do a between search I'm just going to go ahead and do between 1111 and 1120. 
And when I do that, it's going to fill out this expression. Again, we don't want people to have to struggle and fill this out. Let's just go ahead and use the GUI capabilities. It'll fill that out automatically and then go ahead and submit that information. So when we do such, we bring up our result set, just the 10 items in question. Naturally, you have the ability to be able to sort high to low, low to high, simply by clicking on the left mouse button. If I want to be able to do multiple documents at a time, perhaps I want to export those document indexes, bring them over to an Excel spreadsheet, an access table, etc. Just go ahead and click on that, and you'll see when I open this, it's bringing off that information so I can create a nice little report for my manager or my department lead if necessary or when necessary. So that's, again, out of the box. If I want to be able to, uh, I'm not going to do that yet, but if I wanted to email these documents, email is using SMTP connectivity with the IIS ser uh, server. So if I wanted to do a to, a from, send that information off to uh, whoever in, uh, you want to send it to, the message format, HTML or text, you can send the entire document, which is appropriate for people uh, external to us, or you may cert, uh, send an attachment as a hyperlink. Hyperlink is very valuable for those people that are part of the application extender viewing experience because we are not going to take up the, uh, the Exchange server or Lotus Notes server or any other email server with the, uh, the uh, 10 meg or 20 meg worth of uh, documentation that we may be sending. We're simply going to uh, send links. The links then would be uh, opened up Verify that you have access into that data source, whether you have access into that application or file cabinet, and even down to the document itself. So uh, email, out-of-the-box capabilities as everything else is. Now let's go ahead and do a text search, and I'm just do, going to do a quick and dirty one here. This is very nice. If I've got those uh, five documents highlighted and I just wanted to search for a particular string or even doing a fuzzy search. So I know the word the must be in one of those pages. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a search for the. And you'll notice that I do have it uh, restricted to 100 hits. Um, I'm going down and it uh, uh, not only highlights the word the, but it's given me a surrounding documentation of the sentence that that occurred in. So if I go ahead and click on this, it's going to open up that hyperlink, open the page that is referenced, and display that information to me. And there we go. So there's the town, and if I wanted to see the image that that came from, I just click on the big A air, uh, that, that came up in my menu bar, and it shows me the um, the view, the scanned image that uh, it came with originally. So in the background, what we did is an, an optical character recognition pass and a full text search pass, perhaps, uh, that was done off on what is referred to as the index server. We are not using the resources of the desktop itself. Let's go ahead and do a full text search now. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, actually execute that from the desktop client. And I've got a document over, open here in the uh, uh, desktop client. So let's go over to that and let's go into uh, the county application again. I'm just going to do a new query. And this time, I'm going to do it minus any index searches. So I'm going to come out here and do a search for the words real Salado select that exact phrase and do a search. So if real Salado exists in my documents, it brings back the results set, tells me how many pages that it occurred on, and I'll just go ahead and double click this. This is the desktop client. Uh, it is either physically uh, installed on the Windows client or it may be delivered to the client via Citrix presentation server or terminal services. So you'll see here that on this particular page, or this particular document, we have four hits. I'm going to show all hits on this page. We see that three have been highlighted. If I do a next, it goes off and shows me the one that's there. Okay. So there is that. Um, can we pause? 
So with that, what I want to go is to another application uh, because we've only looked at uh, uh, county at this point. Let's go over to human resources and do a query there. So with human resources, we see that we have these index values that have been assigned to that particular application or file cabinet. Well, notice down here that we have an asterisk, document type. Document type is very prevalent within Application Extender. It's used a lot for uh, searching by the type of documentation that's coming into the system. You'll see here uh, application, background authorization, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a definition of the content, again, whether it's scanned documents or uh, Microsoft Office documents or whatever it may be. So what we're doing is setting up the index values for not only the storage of said uh, documentation, but uh, perhaps as importantly or more importantly, being able to retrieve that content quickly and easily. So if the document type is application, I do a search, I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the applications. This again is the uh, desktop client. It's easy for me to go ahead and click and be able to size these uh, uh, result set settings. If I wanted to be able to set it in this manner, I can go ahead and save that. And now the next time that I come in, the presentation is going to be in this mode. You may also notice the blue folders over on the left-hand side, and the, one of these is checked. That means that this document has been checked out. What does that imply? The document is checked out, therefore, if I own this document, if I'm the person that checked this out, I am allowed to open it up for editing. This would be very appropriate if you, as an end user, have the uh, uh, permissions to go ahead and make modifications to the index fields and uh, the content itself, whether it be adding or deleting, the annotations, redactions, anything that's being changed, you can go ahead and uh, do a check-in and a check-out. So if I come out here and uh, I just want to be able to perhaps add another page, I'm just going to go ahead and do a page, new, and I'm going to just uh, import. So you notice the, the, the toolbar is a little different here for the desktop client. Uh, most of the functionality is uh, the same between the web access client and the desktop client. So I'm going to go ahead and insert after and again just bring up a, uh, I'll bring up a document here. And that page is done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and check this document in. When I do such, new document revision, whether it's a major revision, 1.x, 2.x, replace the current revision, or if it's a minor, dot one, dot two, dot three. So I'm going to go ahead and create it as a minor revision. Done. And now that document is stored and ready to be uh, ready to be accessed by anybody in the organization. Okay. Another thing that I want to show is the ability to protect documents, what we refer to as document level security. So I'm going to come in and log in as AP Manager. An AP Manager wants to be able to look at the uh, reason why somebody uh, may have been terminated within the organization. So he or she has been allowed into the HR application, but when, uh, when he or she goes out and tries to look for termination forms, comes out and says there is a no termination forms found. That is his or her view. Let's go off and log out and log back in as, oops, I'll log in as administrator here. This is using Windows Security, so I came in as administrator. I'm going to log in as administrator, do that same query with the termination form, and this time it opens up. So I just wanted to show that you can, even within the file cabinet or application itself, itself be able to segregate data out or documentation out, be able to give access to or deny access to particular forms based on one or more of these index fields. With that said, I'd like to go over to a, another way to be able to interact with data, and that's using the Application Extender Integration Module. This is a, uh, a traditional green screen presentation. A lot of uh, IBM shops utilize this, but I, I don't want to limit it to that. It's any interface that we can be able to copy and paste information from. 
Uh, so whether it's a Unix uh, workstation, whether it's uh, or Uni I'm sorry, not a Unix workstation, a Unix uh, application, whether it's an Access database, Excel spreadsheet, whatever the case may be, as long as we can be able to copy the information, um, I can be able to set up one or more index fields to be able to retrieve the content back from the application extender file cabinet. So in other words, CV443, if I go ahead and click on the F2 key, which of course you can't see, I'm going to go out and retrieve the result set of information that backs up that green screen world. So in this presentation here, CV443, I've got these documents have been retrieved uh, that support that, the, the four invoices, two checks, and a purchase order. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, with that said, I can then come out and just like we showed previously with the web access client, go ahead and open that document up and be able to work with that to our heart's content. This will be a Word document. And this is another nice thing about uh, um, AX 6.5 is that the Office client, if it's installed on your desktop, can be able to uh, open up right into the uh, viewer product itself, in this case Web Access, and be able to make modifications to it if, if necessary.